All right, hey folks, how's everybody doing out there? Hope you're doing well on this beautiful planet that we call the Earth. It's a beautiful day here in the PI. I got blue skies, a little bit of clouds. I got a nice breeze. No clouds, eh? just only a blue sky. When you look in that direction, I see clouds. If you look I, up there, I look blue. in there, there is. Okay, so you, <laughs> you have differing opinions, right? Can we both agree that the wind is blowing? We have a nice breeze. No, it's hot. Okay, baby. No, it's, no, I know. I agree that it's hot, but at least we have some wind blowing. No, only the tree, but didn't blow to you. Gosh. Okay, but at night it's very cool, right? Yeah. At night it's like free air conditioning. Because they have. When that sun, sun goes down with that wind coming off that ocean, I mean, we're like less than a kilometer from the water as the crow flies. That's the good thing about living close to the beach is that breeze coming off of the ocean. Okay, thanks for joining us on today's little informal talk. And basically what we're going to do is read a viewer's comment sent to us from uh, Tom. Thank you very much, buddy. And this is a valid scenario that some of you or even many of you might find yourself in. If you leave your home country and you marry a girl, uh, you know, in a place like the Philippines and you move there to a new culture, you're around her family. Mm -hmm. and, then, and you might find yourself in this situation. So, man, I'm so glad you sent this comment. The, the, the past, you know, the, the past few years of my life, I've been living this, this situation. And it basically just has to do with living close to your Filipino wife's family. And the issues, you can call them issues or problems. You, I mean, not necessarily problems, but I would say just circumstances that you might find yourself in. Okay. Quick caveat. We're just going to talk about it. I'm not telling anybody what to do. This video is designed to invoke thought. That's it. You're the captain of your own destiny, and you ultimately have to make up your mind as to what makes you happy. If anything I tell you doesn't make you happy, well, you're the captain of your own destiny. So let's just, you're an asshole for saying that. This video is designed to invoke thought. Without further ado, I have let's been engaged. Let's get started. Huh? <laughs> no, you no, go ahead. You ready to get started? <laughs> Let's okay. get started. Stop. Hey, folks, my beautiful Filipino wife, number two, Fatima, playing Vanna White. She's just back there for the eye candy. Looking good in her stretchable workout pants that she wears to school every day. She takes a child to school. I don't think it's appropriate for the school, but I like to look at it so I don't complain. Hello, this is good as long you're not wearing a short, short, shirt. Daisy Duke. Yeah, Where the Daisy Dukes at home, baby? Mm, but not in school. Here we go. I have been engaged to a Filipina since 2018 and have a four year old son together. Okay. I'm hoping that you will share how you deal or dealt with in laws and the language barrier. She wants to live in her family's village, and I want to live close to the beach, which is a good five hour drive between their place and where we're staying. Whenever we visit her family, the language barrier is miserable. What kind of miserable? The younger... Well, let me just read the whole comment, then we'll go back, baby, and break it down sentence by sentence, okay? The younger family members know English, but are afraid to speak it, and most of the older ones might be able to read it, but can't speak it. My southern accent doesn't help. She likes to visit for seven to ten days when we go, but I've reached the point that I stay one day and head back to the beach house by myself. I just can't stand sitting in her house with all of her family and relatives chatting, and I can't understand a word. I've been trying to learn Tagalog, but it's very slow going. I definitely have no desire to live there in her village and deal with that on a daily basis. This is majorly affecting our relationship and just wanted your two cents on how you dealt with it. Thanks, and I really enjoy watching. On a side note, I was unable to be in the Philippines for my son's first two years because of COVID, which really sucked, and now it feels like they think I stole their grandson. So that's the comment, the situation that uh, Tom finds himself in. And I said, you know what, that's a perfect that's a perfect situation for us to talk about 
and we're going to weigh in on it. So let's let's break it down. Okay, so he's been engaged uh, 2018. So what is that? Uh, six years. So it's not a fresh relationship. They they've been together for six years, and got a four year old son. That's almost as old as Forrest G. And start out with the language barrier. Okay. People have this misperception about the Philippines that everybody in the Philippines speaks English. I'm moving to the Philippines over Thailand because they speak English. In my opinion, that's the biggest untruth that there is out there. I can navigate Thailand much better than I can navigate the Philippines. Because you know how to speak Thai, that's why doesn't have anything to do with speaking Thai. Obviously it helps, but in Thailand there are millions and millions of tourists. That's where they have an unfair advantage, right? They're used to dealing with foreigners. It's very easy to navigate. Uh, sitting at my Thai wife's house before I started learning Thai, I had no idea what they're talking about. A very similar situation. Nobody spoke English, except for my old lady and her sister understood a little bit. Our mom understood a little bit, but speak no English. Uh, so I dealt with this uh, with my relationship in Thailand. So in the Philippines, does everybody speak English? No. There's so many dialects here in the Philippines. There's over 7,107 islands, as they say. And there's hundreds or, I don't know, over a thousand. I, I'd, hate, I'd hate to even put a number on it. How many dialects? She speaks Bisaya. Her mother goes to Manila, she can't communicate because she doesn't speak Tagalog. It's the same country. So right off the bat, everybody thinks, oh, I'm, I'm moving to the Philippines because they speak English. Wrong. That's not true. So how do I deal with the language barrier? Well, when I first went to her village, uh, well, let, let's just talk about the language barrier. Mm. Grandma understands a lot of English, right? She understands a lot of English if I break it down in simplicity. She cannot talk. But she cannot speak English. Very few words. And also, if they do, there is a shyness factor that they, they don't want to. Because they shy the... <laughs> speak up, baby, because they're what? They are shy to speak English because... Um, people in yeah, wrong grammar or okay so they're shy because they're afraid that they're gonna mess it up but they yeah. don't want to mess it up in front of the foreign guy uh, oh, yeah. okay folks Filipinos in my opinion especially from the province are very shy people would you agree yeah villagers Not like me <laughs> so shy so you're dealing with the shyness issue in addition to the lack of English proficiency issue. So even the people who do speak English are not going to speak English to you. They're shy because you're a foreigner in the village, especially when you first go out there or if you infrequently go out there. Okay, so how do I deal with it? Simplicity. Very simplicity. Sometimes people will start talking to you like, in, in Bisaya, like you know every word they say, especially when you start drinking. Now here's the advantage of being a drinker. Usually when I go to her village, what am I doing? I'm drinking. Luckily, drunks understand drunks no matter what language you're speaking. So when me and her father and uh, you know Tito Romel, we all get to drinking, somehow or another we communicate, even though we don't understand <laughs> technically a word that anybody is saying, right? we end up having a good time. When they're telling stories and I have no idea what they're talking about, but everybody laughs, well, laughter is contagious. So I don't know if that explains how I deal with it, but I got into a routine. I guess this will explain how I deal with it. Initially, when you're trying, to, trying your best to show the family that you want to be part of the family and you're trying to do this and do this, and asking questions and people are shying away from you at some point you have to realize they don't understand you you don't understand them and really when we go to your village baby 
When we go to your village, what do you want to do? Eating! <laughs> What's that? Okay, eating. But you want to chismas with your family, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because she hasn't been in the village in a week or two. There's a lot of chismas to catch up on, a lot of gossip. So when we get to the village now, now folks, this is, we've been together how many, six or seven years? I don't even know. I know the exact date, but I can't, it was 20, anyhow. <laughs> Almost seven years. Almost seven years. <laughs> when I was first trying to like, I don't, I hate to use the word integrate, but to really like get into the village and get to know everybody and get into their way of life and uh, that gets old. And what I've come to the conclusion of, of living outside my home country for a long time is, you know what? I'm not Filipino and I'm never going to be Filipino. Okay. I'm, I wasn't Thai. I'm not Thai. And it's okay to admit that to yourself and just realize when I go to their village, I don't have to be up in everybody's business trying to act like I'm Filipino. So what works for me? How do I deal with it? Well, you watch my show. I pack my own little bag of a bottle of wine, some beers, whatever I'm going to do. And I sit up over on my own little area. Now, I've been around them long enough that they don't think I'm an asshole by going over there doing my own thing. They know I'm messing with my cameras or flying the drone or, you know, mixing my own drinks. And I let them just enjoy each other's company because I don't understand the damn word they're saying. So why should I sit over there and be up in their grill? Just let her go over there, have her space, jaw jack with her family, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I sit over there and drink my drink. I enjoy the sugarcane feel and everybody's happy. I watch the kids running around. If I were the type of person that liked to watch movies, you could sit over there and watch movies on my iPad or on my phone or whatever, but I don't, you know, I film. But if I weren't filming, I would just sit there and enjoy my drink and, and just let her have a good time gossiping with her family. Because no matter how hard you try, they're not going to learn any English that day. <laughs> you're not going to learn any Tagalog or Visaya that day. And all you're going to do, if you go over there, and what I keep doing, baby, what they're saying, translation. How many times a day do I say translation, translation, translation? <laughs> And Many what's that do? Times. Many times, right? And what do you do? What they do? Most of the time you just ignore me. You don't translate. So <laughs> I'm like, translation, <laughs> translation. By that time, the conversation has went way down the timeline to the right. <laughs> Nothing gets translated. And all I'm doing is just pissing her off. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Every time I say translation, it just pisses everybody off. Because now they got to stop and explain the crap to the foreign guy. Right? Yeah. Baby, you're very talkative today. Thank you for contributing to the show so much. Yes! <laughs> we'll come, come again. <laughs> okay, so, so how, do I, how do I deal with it? It's like you, you don't try to deal with it. You just you let them have their space. You get your space. And I don't want to say remain silent, but just... Just let them have their space, let them chat. Now here's the problem I've tried to explain to her, is that in our culture, if everybody at the table is supposed to speak English, and you have two people that start talking in Tagalog, in my culture that's rude, because you're carrying on a secret conversation, right? Mm. And we don't like that. If everybody speaks English, well everybody speak English where everybody can understand the conversation. But Filipinos don't see it that way. They, they, don't, they don't perceive it to be rude. You can all be speaking English, and if they bust out into Tagalog, they're going to do it. You're like, hey, speak English so everybody can understand what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So there's a little, no, there's a huge difference in culture uh, about how they'll switch languages on you and not think anything about it. So, anything else you want to add about the language when I'm in the village? No. Do you want to sit next to me the whole time and do translation? No. <laughs> Why not, baby? Don't you want me to be part of the conversation? Hello! I'm tired of speaking English. I've been speaking English for 
Monday to <laughs> to Monday to Friday or Saturday. That's the my time to speak Bisaya too. Okay, so it's like a break from having to speak uh, English. Yeah. Because her native language is Bisaya. So let me ask you this. When you think, what language do you think in your brain? Bisaya or yeah, English? Bisaya. So see, she thinks in Bisaya, and then when she has to speak English, her <laughs> brain has to translate that into another language. <laughs> Me, I think in English. So if I want to speak Thai or speak Spanish, there's a translation process that has to go in my brain. I formulate the thought in English, translate it, it comes out in Thai or Spanish or whatever language I'm trying to speak. So this is a break for her. Now here's the problem. That used to be the break. When we lived in Angeles City or any, anywhere else, right, we're speaking English all the time. So her break was to get on the video and speak Bisaya to her family. Okay? And her English was improving slowly, a little bit, but it was improving. Now, I have created a monster, so to speak, by moving here and, you know, being around her family, being in an air back to her home where everybody speaks Bisaya. Now, every day, all day, they're speaking Bisaya. Now, every day of my life, <laughs> I have no idea what people are saying. Not just on the weekends. You want to talk about how do I deal with it? On the weekends, I just go into my own little world. Let them do their thing. I enjoy the view. What about everyday life here? Everyday life, I mean, Maria is learning Bisaya more than Tagalog now. She's conversing in Bisaya with them. Uh, her English is getting better, you know, because of me and because of school. But I'm inundated with Bisaya. So every day I'm like, translate, translate, translate. They don't want to translate. <laughs> so is it frustrating? Yep, absolutely. But if there was an easy solution, the easy solution is marry a chick who speaks English. And none of us really want to do that. Yeah, if you, want, if you don't want to have a stress, you marry the... English, I yeah, know, people, eh, American, same you. If you read my book, The King's Chronicles, I actually talk about in there. Now look, this was in my, you know, back in my early years. So de less than, now I have a decade of experience. But I wrote in the book something to effect of, go to a country where they don't speak English. I want a girl that speaks no English. Well, be careful what you wish for, because I got one. <laughs> wow. Oh, I, I can speak English a little bit. No, but I understand you. You cannot sell me. Huh? So be careful what you wish for. Uh, honey, t I wrote a book. I wish for a girl no English and boom, here you are. Mm. Man, it's like Christmas. Mm, but I can, I can understand that I can speak a little bit, but not too much. But you cannot sell me, Marcus. Okay. All right. So that sentence, how do I deal with it? Uh, give them their space, let them converse, don't be up in your wife's grill, hey, what are they saying, what are they saying, what are they saying, translate, 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 translate. You just sit over there, be the good canoe, let your wife have her space, and let her gossip with, your, with the, the family. Uh, you're not going to carry on in-depth political conversations with anybody at your wife's family, if they live out in the province. It's not going to happen. So sort of just know your role, give her some space. And what else, what, what, what advice can you give to this gentleman who doesn't understand anything when he goes to his wife's family's house, <laughs> to the village? What, what would you tell him to do? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So by me going to the village and sitting over on my bench and basically just doing my own thing, do you like that? Yeah, like the, the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> but what? I like that that you don't bother me. <laughs> don't make say, you say it again. I like that that you you're not bothering me. <laughs> My cheese. <laughs> she likes that I don't bother her and interrupt her cheesemas, right? <laughs> okay, it is what it is. Okay, let me ask you this: Do you want me to become more involved in the conversation? No. Say it again, louder. No. 
okay? Does your family think that I'm being rude by just kind of doing my own thing? No. They don't think I'm being rude? No. So it's okay. Yeah. It's okay for me to just sit there, do my yeah, own thing. Yeah, because if if you're if you're in your if you're in their front, they're shy to this they they're shy to speak English. Yeah, it's better. <laughs> just, just. Okay, there's well, they're obviously yes, I agree. They're shy to speak English, but the other thing is too, when I come around, uh, we've been together almost seven years. Her brother is so shy. And you've seen him flashes in the videos, right? He's got a, he's rocking like a big curly, <laughs> like, like uh, carrot top type dude. Dude, his name's Joe Mar, right? Joe Mar, when he sees me coming, he disappears. You will only <laughs> see him on the beginning of the video. Maybe uh, if he comes to eat for a minute, or as I'm leaving, he's coming back in. He is so shy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's naturally shy, but he shows so shy to me that that kid leaves the village when I show up it's after seven years. So just remember the shyness. Uh, remember, she really doesn't want me to be in a conversation. What the yeah. hell am I going to add anyhow? Yeah, because I'm tired to translate. <laughs> and, and folks, they're, the subjects that they're talking about, my friend, yeah, we're talk just talking about cheese, but we're not talking about you too. So yeah, they ain't talking about us. They're talking about, oh, did you hear? You know, yeah. uh, you know, Atimama's cow. Yeah, was we're just over talking there. about family. We're just talking. We're not talking about you, Kano, and why you, blah, 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 blah. We're just talking about what happened that day, what happened, the cheese was in the view, with how, what happened. Simplicity. Uh, like that, but we're not talking about Simplicity. you. Simplicity. Okay, so um, anyhow, that's a big long diatribe about uh, you know how we deal with the language barrier. Uh, you know what, man? My challenge is just communicating with her. All right, everybody else, I, I can't even think about worrying about communicating with everybody else. You know, I'm ch it's a challenge to communicate with her. Me and Grandma are on a, on a basic communication. <laughs> you know, uh, hey, Grandma, can you give me some more tea? Most of the time, mm, she like grunt. She comes back with some teeth, <laughs> right? I mean, it is a simple one-word communication. I can't say, "Hey, Grandma, can you go over and give me some tea? Put three tea bags in it, a little bit of sugar." Grandma just looks at me. Okay, <laughs> Grandma, can you fix me some tea? She come back with some tea. Very simple. Uh, but initially, me and Grandma couldn't communicate at all. <laughs> All right, so let's let's move forward. She wants to live in her family's village, and I want to live close to the beach, which is a good five-hour drive between their village and, and the beach house. Okay, so you got five hours of separation. Um, so my advice to every my advice to people who come over here and, and marry. The Filipina is you have to s separate from her hometown and her village by one island now this is oh you're a hypocrite where okay I have a different situation all right I have kids okay our son is autistic I am in a different situation than you the bachelor or you know you coming over you got one one small child which gives you the flexibility to live anywhere you know they're not in school yet my advice initially was you live one island away. So, for example, she's from Cebu. We live up on Luzon. Okay, we live in Manila or Angeles City or Subic. Why? Because her family can't get on a trike or a bus and show up and ask for money or want free food or just stop by and want to do cheese miss and interrupt my day. Okay? And that was, that's great advice. Okay, so the issue that you have is your five, five hours drive time, that's not far enough to separate from her family. If you're in driving distance, you're still sort of married to the family. Even if we move to Cebu City, that's a you know, couple hundred peso bus ride, people can get to us. 
And so you don't have that separation or that peace and serenity. Now, maybe if we move to Buntayan Island, which I've threatened to do, if we move to Buntayan Island, ain't nobody taking a trike to Hagnaya, then getting on a ferry. They're not coming there. That's separation, what I mean. Now, is that mean? Well, it's all about who's... It's subjective. It's all about whose perception you look at it from, right? If you're retiring... You want peace and quiet. You want peace and quiet with your wife, your kid. You don't want people stopping by unannounced all the time, interrupting you. But I have to look back of how I grew up. When I was brought into this world, I lived on a dirt road in a single wide trailer. Our nearest relatives were, I don't know, a quarter mile down the road. That's my cousins. The back side was my, uh, of the of the of the land was uh, my grandfather, right? And rednecks, I guess I should caveat caveat this. Everything that I say in this video, it applies to I don't say poor people, but it applies to a certain way of life and a certain culture. I'm here in the Philippines. We're talking about Filipinos, but Filipinos are very similar to the way I grew up. My family of rednecks. You know, poor people the world over have a lot tighter family ties um, than folks in the West, right? So when I grew up, and I try to explain it to her, you know, that a lot of how her culture is is very similar to mine. We didn't lock our doors, number one. And number two, family didn't call and say, hey, I'm coming over. Family just came over, opened the door, and came on in. That's how I grew up. They came over, we all ate together. Uh, you know, we went to my grandfather's house. There's no, there's no locks on the door. You don't have to call and announce your presence. You just show up. If you show up at, at uh, Papaw's house, there's food on the table, left over from breakfast or lunch or whatever. There's, you know, uh, uh, dish towels over the food to keep the flies off of it. If you want some food, go sit down and eat. That's the way I grew up, which is very similar to the way it is here, right? So for example, uh, we're sitting here doing this video. Somebody might show up out front, right? Just like yesterday, who, who, who showed up yesterday? In one day, who showed up? You had two, two sisters show up, uh, a cousin or a nephew. I mean, you had like five or six family members just stop by and show up. That's the culture. Now imagine if we're over in the village, living in the village, it's everybody's just meshed together, right? So it's the culture, but if you're looking for peace and tranquility and not have to deal, and I say deal, again, I'm, I'm not, if you don't want those interruptions in your life, you have to live one island away. It's no different than, you know, if I don't want my family being that close to me on that dirt road, I move one state over. Now you don't have that that interruption and that interaction on a daily basis. It's like my buddy the J Dog. You know, he moved to the country next to his wife's family years ago, and he called me up every day. He's like, "Man, I can't keep cereal in the house. You know how expensive a box of cereal is." I'm like, "Yeah." He said, "Every morning I go in my kitchen to get some cereal." And there's like three nieces or nephews of his wife in there eating all his damn cereal. He was going through a box of cereal a day. You know, when uh, at the time they only had one kid. Well, that's the way rednecks are. That's the way Filipinos are. How do you mitigate that if you truly want to, uh, to just put a damper on it? You got to live one island away. You got to get a ferry ride or a plane ride away from them where they can't just stop by. Is that being mean? I don't think so. It's just saying, hey, I'm an older guy. I need some peace and tranquility. And my vision of retirement is to not have your family stopping by three, four, five times a day eating all the rice. Would you like to weigh in? Go ahead. Okay, all right, well, let me put it on you, right? Okay. You've had some stresses since we lived here, right? Which is the different lifestyle of having family, you know, being family, right? Whereas when we lived in Subic Bay, you had less 
interruptions oh. of your day, right? Yeah, but in there, it's my work. Oh, in here, somebody can help me. Okay, so let's go to the positive side of living around family. That's why I'm here. Okay, if it's just me and her, I don't want to be here. I want to be living out of a suitcase and, you know, island hopping or what have you. When the babies were babies, we can go anywhere. They're not going to school. You know, when we did, we, we bounced around. The positive side of living next to her family is that, in my case, it takes a village to raise a child. And, you know, with our son who has autism, family is such a wonderful, positive thing. It really is. It makes her life so much easier. We got grandma here. We got Kalamansi here. We got her sister right down the road. We got a whole village of backup if something goes down. So in my situation, it's it, it equals itself out. The interruptions, the folks showing up, eating all the rice out of the rice cooker. Uh, you know, and, and, and you know what? I'm not against it. I, I think this is my only, like, complaint. And it's, and it's not really a complaint. It's just like, you know, sometimes say you're low on groceries and, you know, you're going to the market tomorrow or what have you. And then here a bunch of people show up and we don't have anything to offer them. Mm. I don't like that. That's the one thing I don't like. Not because they're not welcome. It's just that there are times when we're not prepared to receive visitors but they, you know, they're, they're coming, they're coming and they're not going to announce it. And so, you know, you got three, four kids show up. They're obviously hungry. And I'm like, my gosh, you know, how do you mitigate that? Well, just never get low on groceries. Make sure you always have, <laughs> make sure you always have a bunch of Cokes and stuff. So if the kids show up, you know, you, you can feed them. And that was my grandfather's philosophy. My grandfather was a good man. And, you know, he was a carpenter, farmer. And he always said, we don't have a lot of money, but by God, if somebody shows up, they ain't gonna leave hungry. And so, you know, I'm carrying on that philosophy now, and it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me that everybody shows up now. I'm okay with it. I just don't like it when, uh, you know, people show up and she don't have anything to offer them to drink or whatever, you know, but that's on me. I could easily just keep a lot more stuff in stock, you know. Anything else you want to add, baby? You're being quiet over there. I'm listening. Uh, I mean, do, do you, does it bother you that people just show up and like that? <laughs> speak up. Speak up now. Sometimes. <laughs> Say it louder. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like what? When does it bother you? <laughs> when I'm trying to <laughs> when I'm trying to <laughs> baby, all they're hearing is laughing. When I'm trying to sleep, they don't <laughs> okay. When she's trying to sleep, when she's trying to relax, and you got family showing up unannounced, she don't like that. Okay. <laughs> But it, it, it is what it is. Or, or maybe we're trying to do some tenderoni time. <laughs> Ain't nobody calling a hit. They just gonna show up, ah, yo. And you're like looking out the window like, ah. <laughs> That's the way country people live. That's the way Filipinos live. And you have to understand that, uh, you know, you're, you're move, if you're moving here, okay, welcome to the culture. It's like you're moving to the backwoods of Mississippi in the 70s. Is how, is how I would explain that aspect of the culture. So, all right, let's move forward. Well, let's, let's go back to the five hour drive. If you truly want separation, you're not far enough away because if anything goes down, anything happens. And I've learned this the hard way through the years, even with my tie wire. Okay, my tie wire, uh, brother crashes the motorbike, he's laid up in the hospital, right? The whole family's gonna mobilize, but guess who's, they're looking at to pay for it, right? You gotta pay for a brother's hospital stay, you gotta pay to get the motorbike out of the police station, and you gotta pay to fix the damn motorbike, right? It's a family crisis, but you the foreigner, okay, you're bankrolling a lot of these family emergencies, if not most of them. I'm not saying you have to, and you pick and choose how you wanna help and, and where the help is right. Don't just dish out free money. 
but if you're a five hour drive, man, you're on the hook. Cause all you gotta do is get in a car and go there. Whereas if we're sitting up in Subic Bay and there's a problem, we're not booking a flight and coming down on the next thing smoking. They gotta deal with the problem, right? Right? Yep. Okay. And you know, one of the videos you guys like is when you know me and her got into it because I didn't want to pay Flo's hospital bill when she turned out a kid after riding a hot dog. We had a big disagreement about it. Hey, we had a disagreement. I don't think it was my responsibility to pay for her hospital bill at the last minute. Oi, we're talking about him. No, we're not talking about that. Go, go ahead. Okay, but, but here's the thing about it. Here's the positive thing. The only thing it was out, I was out, was an argument and some money. Because I, you know, did you pay? Well, in the end, yeah. You know, she only needed like 2K to go to the market. I don't know, I gave her 5K and she went straight to Palawan and sent the money. <laughs> she saved her sister. They, they got to escape the, they were released from the hospital. Whatever the money was, right? So I was out the money and uh, an argument but if we had been here, well, we would have been at the hospital, right? At least she would. She would have been at the hospital and then, you know, coming back here trying to get 5K out of my pocket. So there you go, the separation, man. That five hour drive, it's, you're still connected to the village. You're not far enough away. You need a ferry ride and a plane ride to totally be disconnected from the family. Whenever we visit her family, the language barrier is miserable. Yeah. The younger family members know English, but are afraid to speak it. And most of the older ones might be able to read it, but can't speak it. And my Southern accent doesn't help. So, man, we've already co covered the, the language barrier. You're not going to fix that. Um, it's going to take you forever to learn Tagalog more than just a little bit. I don't know the first foreigner over here that really speaks Tagalog. I understand a lot of what they're saying because I speak a little bit of Spanish, a lot of the words are the same. But the language thing, man, that's a slow, that's a slow road to hoe, man. I ain't cracked that nut. I really haven't put anything into it, but nobody's interested in me teaching them English. Nobody's interested in teaching me any Tagalog. Me what the nut, Maria? So, Hold on a second. Might be way off on time here, taking Maria to school. 11.29. Oh, we're good? So the language barrier, man, is not going to be solved. It will, through time, you'll be able to communicate basically like I communicate basically with grandma. And I live around her, you know, six days a week, 24 hours a day. Okay? A lot of pointing, a lot of simplicity, a lot of Mm-hmm, but you really don't understand what I'm saying. So I would just say, uh, just chill about it. Don't beat your head against the wall. That's something you're just not gonna solve. All right, she likes to visit for seven to 10 days when we go. That's a long time to go to your wife's village. When we go, but I've reached the point that I stay one day and head back to the beach house by myself. Okay, now that's a problem. Okay, that's a festering problem. And let's spend some time on this. Okay. Now, when we were up there and you went to visit after the lockdown lightened up, how long did you stay? One week? Two weeks. Well, you stayed two weeks, right? Yeah. And now that, that was a good vacation for you, right? Yep. Got a break from the kids. You got to go hang out in the village. Okay, do I want to go sit in the village for two weeks? Uh... Not really. Okay, everybody thinks that village life, oh, you know, you're over there dealing with all these bills in America. And, and Tom, I'm kind of talking to the masses now. You see these videos, everybody wants to go live in a village somewhere, right? And live the simplistic life. It looks appealing when you're sitting there paying a $2,500 mortgage, you're maxed out on everything, struggling just to uh, put food on the table, and you see this. Man, I just want to give everything up and go live in a village somewhere. Well, some people do. But I would say for every 
100 people who would attempt that, there might be one or two that can truly live in the village. Everybody else is seeing the village from TV or from your screen, you know, from a guy like me producing a world-class travel show, might I add. What you don't see is that during the day, it's hot. It's hot in the village, right? It's hot without no air time. But in the... Carrying water up the hill from the well just to go to the bathroom, that's not fun. That gets old real quick. It rains. There's mud that's stickier than sheetrock mud yeah. that you walk through. You can't escape it. I mean, it's a nightmare. You spend so much time cleaning mud off your shoes, you don't want to be there when it rains. Trust me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. She's from the village. She don't even want to live in the village, right? So a lot of people, you know, just addressing the, it, it's sort of like a fantasy, living in the village, you know, or watching the movie. I love the movie. I love uh, Castaway. Dude gets stranded on a... Uh, you know, on an island all by himself, it looks appealing, right? But in reality, that shit gets old real quick. It's like going camping. Everybody loves to go camping, but, you know, most people can stand camping for about two days, and when they get back to that air con and that hot shower, they are glad to be home, okay? They, they like a taste of camping. Nobody wants to go permanently live in a tent. Not many people. And the village is the same way. It's basically like camping with uh, electricity. So, yeah, seven to 10 days. Yeah, that's her natural, that's how she grew up. Now, she can go to the village, but she would rather be here in this air con with some internet, right? So for the foreign guy, are you gonna go spend seven to 10 days in your wife's village without going out of your gourd? Or even if it's not a village, you know, they've got a little house or whatever. You're going to sit around in a small house, surrounded by 30 family members, not understanding what they say. You're going to go mad after two days. I say, what'd you say? One day, two days? I mean, two days max. Are you going to go out of your mind? Uh, so... I've reached the point that I stay, okay, one day and I head back to the beach house by myself. Now this is, this is a problem because that's going to fester. I'm just putting myself in your shoes that, you know, I moved to the Philippines. I got a wife and a kid and she's spending a lot of her time with her family to where I'm driving home and spending time by myself on the beach all of a sudden resentment is going to set in. You're going to start to resent your wife while you're sitting there alone looking at the beach wondering why you're alone. You're like, damn, I was alone in America after my divorce. I move over here, I got a wife and a kid, and now I'm sitting here alone again. And you're going to start to resent her. Now, a guy like me, if I find myself sitting at the beach house by myself, I'm out finding a girlfriend. I'm not going to sit by myself. Next thing you know, okay, I got a new lady hanging out. That creates problems with the marriage sometimes, right? Babe, you can chime in here at any moment. You understand what the gentleman's doing, right? He's going, his wife wants to stay in the village for 10 days. He gets bored after one day, but he goes home by himself. Now he's alone for 10 days by himself. That's not fair, right? Yes or no? Is that fair? <laughs> I don't know it, but <laughs> I'm just putting myself. If I'm sitting here looking at the beach, I don't. I don't know. Maybe I didn't enjoy it. Maybe I enjoy the break from you. I think what I would do is load my kid up, go back to the beach house. You can stay in the village all you want. Me and Forrest Gia hang out on the beach. Wow. I don't care when you come back. Wow. You stay wait, here if you want wait, to. Wait, wait, wait. Of course, you're looking for me. <laughs> I'm not looking for you. Yeah, you do. <laughs> but if she had the kids and I'm sitting there by myself, I'd be like, what the hell am I doing here? I'd, I'd go straight to the bar and start hunting down some ladies. Wow. That's what I would do. I'd be scrolling through Tinder like this. My Tinder, my Tinder thumb would be on fire, baby. I'd be cramping up, swiping right. Go ahead. So I, I think that's a problem. That's a problem that needs to be addressed. How do you solve that? A, 
move one island away, and if she wants to go see the family, it's structured. Gets on a flight, she spends one week, she comes back, and then next visit six months down the road. And you're not, you know, I don't know how frequently she goes, but I see the problem there. But I can't... Seven or ten days, it's, it's long already. That's too long, right? Yeah, you could spend your family two days like that. Yeah, she just needs to go. You need to go for the weekend, man. Go go visit her, you know, because show up Saturday already, morning. You both have already kids, so you need to have own. <laughs> yeah, you got to have your own thing going on, man. Yeah. And, and and that's the last part of the story. But anyhow, let's move along. Um, let's see. I can't stand sitting in her house with all of her family chatting, and I can't understand a word. I've been trying to learn Tagalog, but it's very slow going. Uh, again, you're just going to beat your head up against the wall. I definitely have no desire to live there in her village and deal with that on a daily basis. Hey, I got it. And there's nothing wrong with saying that. There is nothing wrong with saying that. I, I mean, imagine in America, right? Any Anybody listening to my voice, anybody in America, go live in your wife's family's house in their basement. Just try it. See how long it works. There are some compromises and sacrifices and some daily challenges if you go live, you know, even if they got a big house, go live in their basement. Go live in their neighborhood, right? There's some challenges. Let's see. This is majorly affecting our relationship and just wanted your two cents on how you dealt with it. Thanks, and I really enjoy watching. Thank you very much for watching, my friend. Appreciate it. Okay, on a side note, okay, this gentleman, for the first two years of his son's life, was locked out of the PI because of this draconian lockdown that we went through. So for two years, the child grew up in the village without, the, without his father. And I see a power struggle here, uh, and, it, re and it, re it really sucked, obviously, and now they think I stole their grandson. Well, okay, you got to see it from all sides, right? What are they used to? They're used to that little boy. Maybe that's, no. They're used to that little boy being in the village. And I'm just going to use Upau for example, right? Upau has grown up in the village around Fatima's father, Tai Tai. With, you know, uh, mom coming and going, what have you. You know, Flo came up, stayed with us for a little while, now she's going to school. So his power base, is that the word I should use? His natural, uh, what he's used to. There's a calamansi, baby. Go, I lock the door. Go unlock the door. What? Uh, oh, God. Hey. Anyhow, what Upau is used to is being in the village with his grandfather. Because that's where he spent most of his time so far. Now, it's changed up now to where he's... Uh, spending time with his father and Flo. And now they're start, start, starting to operate as a family unit, which is good. Mm -hmm. But his first two years, basically, he can't be apart from Tai Tai, right? Yeah. And still, even when he comes over here and spends the night, like a day or so later, he's crying for Tai Tai to the point you got to take him to the village so he can be with his grandfather. So... There's a transition going on. Or Tai Tai calls up and says, hey, bring him back. I miss him. That's just how the boy was raised for the you know, first, uh, how old is he now? Almost three. Yeah, so say the first two years of his life. He couldn't be separated from his grandfather. Now he's moving forward. Just make it slowly, slowly, slowly until the... Just, just well, if they live five hours away. So I, I guess the point is, it's not a bad thing that they have that attachment to the little boy and it's not a bad thing that he goes and sees his grandparents as much as possible. That's not a bad thing. Just talk. They're like, you have agreement that you can, you can go in, the, in your, you can visit in your village for, for once a month or once, uh, twice, twice a month like that only. Yeah, so, I think I, I think two things. I agree with you. The the seven to ten days is excessive. 
if she wants to go visit her family for seven to ten days, go. But the kid's staying at home. That's excessive, right? I, that's what I would say. Because I don't want to sit at my beach house for ten days without my son. That's not going to happen. <laughs> but put some emphasis into the boy seeing his, his grandparents. If, you want to, if she wants to visit uh, with her son to go her parents, just visit for three days like that. Three days. Yeah, I think anybody can stand three days. I yes. Say, I say two days, but three days max. You go with them, you struggle through it, and, and don't separate. Okay? So you, the compromise is, hey, look, we're going to go see your family, but no more than three days. I'm going to stay yes. there, keep my mouth shut, let our son see his grandfather and his, you know, his grandmother. Three days is just, that's already But after, after three days, we're out of there. There's no more of this separating where I drop you off and... I get pissed off and go home, and now that's not good for the relationship. That's not good at all, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but if she wants to go pull this 10 day, you know, marathon trip, let her go by herself. The kid stays, and, and you enjoy your life with your son. That's what I would do. Will that create problems? It could, or it could deter her from going on these 10 day benders. Maybe, she, maybe that's Christmas. why she wants two days out. Seven days or t ten days be because she's stressed of her husband. <laughs> she's stressed of you. <laughs> she needs to... <laughs> You're saying that maybe the foreign guy is doing stress to oh, his wife. Oh, or she needs to relax because she been... Of course, when she's been with you, same with me. When Marcus always drinking... I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. When, she, when he always drinking, of course I have stress. <laughs> so she need to, <laughs> she need to relax too. <laughs> well, if you need to relax, maybe go stay in the village for ten days. I built you a house. You got a bed over there. Just go spend ten days. Yeah, just give her a, a <laughs> few days <laughs> to to clear her mind. <laughs> some people need a. <laughs> so some okay some oh shit I keep hitting the camera. Some people do need that, but I'm not willing to go frequent 10-day trips away from the kids. That's not fair to me. Uh, that's just excessive. All right, what do we do? We go to the village on the weekends. We spend the night in the tent. It works for everybody. Yep. What do I do? I set up my little shop in, on a bamboo bench. That's my, my bench. You know, the kids come and go, hang out. I help watch the kids. I just let them chismas. But I'm only pulling overnight trips. Yeah. Could I sit there for 10 days? I could. Could I live there? I could. But I'm in a different mindset. I've been around them for seven years. Uh, it's really good for the kids going out there. You know, if, if they'd run a fiber line in there, I'd probably spend a whole lot more time. i just give me some lawn chairs and sit out in front of my tent. But I'm the type of guy that I really like to go camping. Most people aren't. Okay, so let's let's try to simplify what okay, what would I do? What the options are for this gentleman here. If you really want to solve it, A, move an island away by a ferry or a flight. Mm -hmm. Boom, you cut out all this stuff. Yeah. If she wanna cheese miss, she's gonna be cheese miss on the, the video, right? Yep. If there's a problem, the way you're gonna help is send money. That's a couple of clicks, it really doesn't disturb your day. It just disturbs your wallet. <laughs> right yes <laughs> okay option b if you really like the beach house understand that that five hour drive you're sort of connected to her village you're in striking distance but Visit make it for twice a month twice a month yeah every other weekend oh. i would say okay every other weekend load everybody up you show up friday night you spend all day saturday Get yes. up, eat breakfast on Sunday. You're out of there by noon on Sunday, back that's, at the beach house. That's only a five hours. Yeah, I, every other weekend, I'd be cool with that. Yep. Would I'm, you? I'm that's good cool, at that right? Too. Yeah, the boy gets to see the grandparents, the cousins. They they get to uh, know each other, and you're not spending more time than the that you'll go out of your mind. And just let them chat, man. Just sit back, watch a watch a movie, watch your iPad, watch whatever you got on your phone. And uh, 
you heard it from her. They don't think I'm an asshole by just doing my own thing. Yeah, like. And, and again, if you get up in their business, they're shy, people scatter, people don't want to talk, you're, you're really putting a damper on their conversation. So that's what works for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anything else you want to add? Some people have said I should send you to English classes to help with your English. Do you want to go to English class? No. Why not? <laughs> I can, every day I speak English. Because every day I speak English and... <laughs> okay, let me ask you this. If I, if, if, if I offer to send you, Grandma, Tai Tai, everybody in the village to language class, who wants to go? Anybody? No. Nobody. Nobody. N nobody wants to go to a special class to learn more English. There you go. Nobody wants to go learn English. Gosh. We're, we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. What if I bring an English tutor to the village? Will people sit around and listen to English lessons? Yeah, they can do that, but they don't have time to go to go in their, the, play, the place, the, the class. But when the teachers go in the village, you can do that. <laughs> <They can. laughs> All right, brother, I'm just trying to make the point. You're not going to solve the language barrier. It's just, it's not going to be solved. It's not going to get better. All right, just, just worry about trying to communicate with your wife. Uh, like, th that's all I'm concerned about. All I'm concerned about is trying to communicate with her. Everybody else, it is what it is. All right, they Gosh, have their own English levels of- English is much better than before, eh? my coach. What? My English is much better now than before. I don't think so. I'm going to tell you, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Why? When we left Angeles City, your English was at the best it's been. <laughs> now that we moved here and you're back to speaking Messiah, your English is you're actually... You're so bad to me. <laughs> I'm not being mean. I'm making an observation. Your English Whoa. proficiency has went down because every, I would say, what, 85% 80, 80, of your day you're speaking Messiah and now you're only speaking English 15% of the day. In Angeli City, it was the opposite. 90% of your day, you were speaking in English. Now it's flip-flop. Now you have, re the word is regressed. You have, <laughs> up there, I would rate you as a, you know, a D minus, and now you're failing. You're okay, I, I, I give you a D. Now you're down to a D. Why, what, what, A D minus. You're mean to me. I'm not mean, baby. Yeah, you're so harsh to me. <laughs> okay. That's not nice. Even you just give me a B. I'll, I'll get, a D. I'll, you know what, baby? I'll give you an honorary B, okay? Like but B. no transcripts. <laughs> okay, look. If you don't, let's simpl simplify this even further. If you don't have children with your Filipino wife, don't live anywhere near her village. Do yourself a favor. But if you have a children, your family, her family can help you. If you if you have children, once you have children, they family in any culture changes from strict liability over to an asset. Now you actually get some return on your investment. But if you're a bachelor with a Filipino girlfriend or a wife, I'm going to maintain live one island away. I'm talking one plane right away from her family so you can enjoy yourself, have peace and tranquility. If you have children, at some point it's necessary. You need to make sure that they know their Filipino side of the family. And that's another reason that we're here. It's important to me that they grow up knowing her family you know, being a part of the family because at some point if I die, where do you think she's going? Baby, if, if we're living in America and I die, where are you gonna go? The village. Okay, if we're, my living, family. If we're living in Manila and I die, where are you going? My family. Okay, she's on the next flight to the village. So it's very important that we fathers of children make sure that they they know the Filipino side of the family, that they know how to live in the village. 
that they are comfortable living in the village or your wife's hometown or what have you, that they know them. Because at some point we're gonna die and it doesn't serve them properly. It's not fair to them that you know, they've, they've been living the good life. And, and not every Filipina is gonna do this, but I know her, she will. It don't matter where, where we're living. If I kick the bucket, she's coming back to the village. Mm-hmm. And so imagine the kids never having any experience living in the village with that lifestyle, it would be shocking. And that's not fair to them. So right now, at an early age, they're getting to know all the cousins, they're getting to know all the, all the aunts, the uncles, the way of life in the village, how to navigate the village, how to shower, you know, go to the bathroom in the village, all these things that would be shocking if you try to take somebody who grew up in the West and then stick them in the village. Does that make sense? Yeah. So uh, my friend Tom, put emphasis into making sure your son knows her family and the grandparents. But uh, if you structure it every other weekend, just go for the weekend. I think everybody will be happy. And then just let your wife do her chismas, let her do her thing. And maybe put a little bit more emphasis into uh, your spending. All right, me and my buddy have this conversation all the time. Like, uh, we've both been married to Thai girls. Now we're with Filipinas. And in the beginning, we were dirt cheap about everything, right? It's just in the nature. But if you limit the days you spend there, spend more money while you're there those two days. Does that make sense? So, like, when you show up, have a big-ass barbecue one night. Make it a positive thing. Don't look at them like they're just sucking you dry. Okay? If you're only going, you know, twice a month, man, you know, roll in there with some fish and shrimp and some pork steaks or whatever and make it a big positive experience for everybody. And just know that Sunday by noon, you're back at the beach house with your peace and tranquility. Yes! Yeah. (laughs) And your wife will be happy. She'll be happy because you're showing her family a good time. You're spending a little bit extra money on her family, in the village. Everybody looks forward to you coming. Yeah. Yeah. Just like us. Everybody looks forward to us coming for village uh, family day, right? Yes. We have a big cookout. Everything's great. And then the next day I'm out of there. And I'm in the good graces of everybody. Oh, you're just being used. Everybody's sucking you dry. Mm -hmm. No. No? When I grew up as a kid... Again, I'm just reflecting back to the 70s as a young child. Every Sunday, we went to my grandfather's house and had Sunday dinner. Everybody. Everybody. If you weren't there, you would be talked about every day for the following week about why you weren't there. That's how tight the family was back then. And then, uh, you know, as time passed, everybody goes their own way, and that thing's a thing of the past. For the most part in America, but not here. So I'm trying to recreate Sunday dinner like I had growing up at my grandfather's house. Best memories of my life, having the whole family around. Here, guess who's gonna make that happen? You, the foreign guy, busting out a few pesos and don't complain about it. So that's what's working for us, right? I mean, it works well for us. We love going to the village, love cooking. Yep. I get the video out of it. I love that too. The I kids love it. I love the Christmas in there. Love the Christmas. But you know, the weekend or an overnight trip, that's enough time. It's enough time to catch up on the week's Christmas. Gossip. I call it cheese moose. Marites. Marites. <laughs> All right, folks, we sat here and talked. Maybe we bramble, what have you. We don't have a script. I didn't even take any notes. I just, what pops into my mind. Baby, any more advice? Any more advice about living next to your wife's village? No. Huh? I don't, I don't. I, I guess too, if, if you live next to, your, next to or in your wife's village or driving distance to your wife's village, again, you have to make that assumption that you're, you're engaged. You know what I mean? 
And it's just, it is what it is. Like you're part of her family. You're part of the family. Yeah. You have to be because <laughs> you have to be. Say her, you know, her sister right now uh, crashes the motorbike and she goes to the hospital. We're here. We're going. <laughs> we have to go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and and it's all hands on deck taking care of whoever's at the hospital, and you're you're gonna fork out some money to help. That's what families do. You know, Forrest G had those seizures. I mean, it was the same way. It was a team of people. That's what family do. That's what family does. So if you're not prepared for that, what do you do? One island away, one plane ride away. Yes. And then you just go to Angeles or Manila. Angeles, Manila, Subic, anywhere but your yes. wife's island. And then um, it'll just impact your wallet. But if you're within striking distance, you'd be ready to get in the car and drive to the hospital and show support for whoever crashed the motorbike. Huh? <laughs> you know, translate what? what translation. What's that mean? Simbako. Simbako. Mekdo. Oh. I have no idea what she said. I've been with her for seven years. No idea. So, bro, you think you're going to solve the language problem with your wife's family? My friend, you ain't going to solve shit. All right. <laughs> if you're a beer drinker, look, I quit drinking recently, right? I just, it, it, I'm, I'm starting a new chapter. But if you're a beer, if, if you're a beer drinker or whatever, I mean, just do what I did. Just take a bottle of wine, take your, your own cooler of beer, just sit there and drink beer and chill. Here's a good thing about that. Who's this? Flo, Flo. Okay, speaking Tata. of devil, there's the breakfast girl, 1158. 11.58. Now you call her the lunch girl. <laughs> hey, there's old Ty Ty. Yeah. Ty Ty showing up. Perfect example. Did anybody tell us they were coming? No. I didn't know Ty Ty was coming, but I'm glad to see him. I'm glad he's here. The, the breakfast girl, if you look at 8 o'clock or noon or about 5 or 6 o'clock, okay, and then there's Flo's uh, husband there. No. Jen Jen's look, uh, get Maria. Okay, so I got a whole crew on station. I don't think we got any Cokes or anything to serve anybody. I don't know if they got any leftover food out there. I'm not real sure. Daddy. Hey, buddy. Please, Daddy, please. Hey, man. What you doing, buddy? Room? Please, Daddy. Help me. Yeah, get that helicopter. Let me see. <laughs> hey, buddy. Pao. What you doing, Hi, man? Pao. Hi, Sa camera, Pao. Hi. Say, hey, buddy. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hey. hey, girl, come in here and say hello. No. <laughs> it's the breakfast girl, folks. Lunch. <laughs> but it's lunch time. Yesterday it's dinner. <laughs> she, was here. she was supper girl yesterday. Now she's lunch girl. What's up, old girl? What's going on? I think my mom is saying I'm going to the I see. I see your husband. Your husband's driving the electric trike now, right? <laughs> folks, breaking news: we got a new Tesla chopper, but not that we bought it. Her husband's uh, <laughs> driving an electric trike now, so we're back in action. Gonna be riding up down the roads. Now we can film, uh, you know, where you can hear us. That's a good thing about an electric trike. The audio is good when you start I'll filming. Say you on your block. Baby, I think you're, you're... Uh, All right, anyhow. Anything else you wanna add, baby? No, I might. Bye-bye now. Yeah, she gotta go no, do no, cheese. No, she no. gotta go do cheese. Must see what her sister's talking about. All right, baby, thank you. Hey, can 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 her brother get some water or some tea? Yeah. You know what? Actually, I'll take some tea. Yeah, the cinnamon. This is what it is. I'll be quite honest with you. Hold on. Well, I sleep that on. No, I turn it off. Hold on. Turn her microphone off. I'll be quite honest with you. If people had showed up like that, historically, it'd piss me off. You know, I'd be trying to accomplish something on the computer or thinking about going out, thinking about doing this, doing that, thinking about some tenderoni time, and then boom, all of a sudden the family rolls in. It would have pissed me off before. Even, uh, you know, up until recently. 
because I'm a private person in America, our culture, nobody comes over, at least these days, it seems like nobody's coming over to your house unannounced, right? It's not going to happen. They're going to call. They're going to give you plenty of lead time. So you know they're coming, right? You're going to give them a time. I'm coming at seven. It don't work with rednecks and Filipinos. Family don't need to call to show up. They're just going to show up. And if you can't deal with that, I'm giving you the solution. One plane right away, and then nobody can get to you. The bus, maybe. What's wrong, baby? There's a mosquito on her booty. All right, folks. Hey, easy now. My gosh, I, tried to, I saved your life right there. I hurt my hand doing so. You have out of delivery. All right, so I got to go, folks. I got Lazada coming with some more goods. Maria, you need to be ready now, Maria. Yes, wait, it's time to get ready for school. I'll see you guys on the next one. Hey, man, time. I hope I invoke thought. If you thought about one thing, I don't know if it helped you at all, man. But uh, I understand your predicament. If you, if you let things continue to go, there's going to be resentment and there'll be bigger problems. Nip it in the bud. All right, I'm out of here. Peace out, my friends.